hello good morning chess friends and i am back with another video and this time i am going to cover some smith mora theory as i promised before so um, next video in this series will be a game featuring judith polgar but for now in this video we are going to have a look at some basic theory of the mora gambit and i am playing this gambit for last 10 years in uh, blitz and bullet games and there are many claims that uh, there are some refutations but i don't believe it uh, because i think uh, this gambit uh, is played for last 150 years and still even with the help of modern computers and all chess engine technology still there is not a clear cut refutation available for this uh, gambit so they have claimed that uh, they have solved the king's gambit problem like uh, using lot lot of resources and there is only one move that uh, leads to a draw for white at best and all other variations are losing but uh, that i think is uh, not very practical because you cannot see ahead some 200 moves in all possible variations so still it is a very practical choice like playing king's gambit and it is going to be played even more with the help of uh, chess uh, engines because uh, there are many variations that were considered uh, bad before the engine technology but now what we have seen is that uh, many vari variations in king's indian uh, oh sorry king's gambit uh, is still playable and there are counter refutations so that is why i think uh, these gambits are not as bad as people think they are and especially at the top level they think uh, uh, these gambits are really bad and one should avoid it but uh, i think mm, there are many possibilities for many learning possibilities especially for intermediate and uh, advanced level players not experts or masters but uh, surely if you are learning just uh, this kind of positions have a lot many tactical possibilities then is uh, very solid uh, opening so if you really are interested in learning tactics and some other chess tricks this uh, openings are really going to help you though you may need to learn other openings if you really want to uh, play a very solid chess but uh, that happens in all kind of chess uh, like uh, what happened to aronian in tata steel tournament like anand uh, prepared something with uh, meran variation and he actually prepared that for boris galfan but uh, aronian became the victim of that preparation home preparation but uh, that is one thing so with the help of uh, and that um, line i think surely was prepared with the help of some computers and seconds so you can say that uh, this uh, engines are also helping human players to understand this game even better than before so I, let's uh, look at some basic ideas in mura gambit so i play c4 c5 uh, e4 this is the basic idea black captures and c3 is played so offering another pawn for quick development and here there are many side lines uh, one is c3 or oh, d3 so to avoid uh, gambit all together and this is played uh, in blitz and bullet games uh, just to avoid a uh, lot of attack 
because there is not much time to calculate everything in uh, blitz game so if you can avoid this gambit then you can play comfortably but uh, that is not true i think old move was queen to take on this square and this pawn on d3 square so that is the old theory but with the help of modern chess engines uh, it is very clear that bishop takes the d3 is much better than black develops normally and this knight a3 move as it seems is uh, bad but uh, actually in reality it is uh, not that bad uh, because uh, this position is uh, very common in Sicilian Alepin or C3 Sicilian so you can say this uh, side line is actually part of the another regular Sicilian opening so that opening is also anti-Sicilian for white so to avoid uh, very attacking positions and deprive black of the regular counterplay in Sicilian so it seems that this knight is uh, not well placed but knight can access these squares c4 and c2 later and even can control this e4 e5 square indirectly if he successfully reaches this c4 square and there are many other ideas also that is involved with the development of this knight on the rim of the board but uh, that is another thing so if you want to study this kind of positions uh, then you should uh, sh also study Sicilian Alapin for white but uh, this is just a sideline so let's go back there is another possibility here that is to take with queen here on the square and this move is slightly older compared to the modern theory but still this is also good and now there is also another possibility just to ignore this thing and play knight f3 because this pawn cannot be protected so what best uh, black can do is uh, play a move like d2 check and then white can capture either with bishop or with knight but that is uh, not a very practical or very good uh, move because after this position <laughs> black has not developed anything except a uh, hole on c7 square so that is a bad idea so in this position usually black's black tries to play this knight to this square here after knight moves instead of this move knight goes uh, here and this is possible but uh, this still is uh, better for white so this knight is uh, very oddly placed here and immediately can be kicked like this and this position is still much much better for white so not accepting the gambit is not a very good idea for black because uh, then you still get a very cramped position and you don't even have your extra pawn so that is why it is better to accept the gambit for black so let's have a look at the main line c3 d takes c3 knight takes c3 so what happened is that we have like white has uh, four moves and black has three moves so total seven moves are played three and a half move and now it is black to move and the uh, best move here for black is probably developing his queen side knight knight to c6 but there are other variations also possible but the main move here is knight c6 
and after knight c6 knight f3 can be played so here white has a lot of control in the cell, uh, center and after black plays something like e6 or d6 in this position both are equally played uh, i think uh, here d6 is uh, played as much as e6 both are good but attacking players prefer to play this d6 move because then you have more scope for this bishop bishop can access all these squares and especially this g4 square so this d6 idea is more you can say uh, solid for more attacking players prefer this idea and it is uh, more aggressive than this move e6 but still uh, both are playable and if this d6 move is played then best move for white uh, i think is bishop f4 though computer suggests uh, many other moves like uh, b3 h3 or queen b3 and even bishop g5 but i don't think those are very good moves only computer can play that kind of positions so here queen b3 is uh, you may consider but otherwise bishop f4 is the best move and bishop uh, c4 sorry is the best move and here the best continuation for black is knight f6 so knight f6 and what happened is that uh, we are six moves into the game and now you can see that white controls the center very well white has uh, total control over this uh, d4 square and also this uh, d5 square black's control over this e5 is slightly better than white's control but still white has a uh, lot of space advantage also and knight uh, can jump to not uh, this square on e5 but on g5 in certain variations knight can go there to attack f7 square that is uh, probably a weak uh, spot in black's camp in the opening as Mikhail Tal prefer to attack that square more than any other and there is uh, this e6 move is possible to avoid uh, any attack on that square and this knight move is not that good uh, best move for white in this position is probably to castle and here e6 is the main move and what uh, we have achieved as white in this position is we have a lot of space advantage and one another thing is that uh, now you have almost open uh, c file though there are some um, pieces on c file right now but uh, i certainly can use his rooks on c and d file and queen goes to this e2 square that is the main idea you move your queen to e2 square put your f rook on the d this f rook on this square on d1 and this a1 rook on this square c1 so how to achieve that right now in this position queen e2 is the main move Queen e2 and after queen e2 sometimes a6 is played just to kick this bishop preparing for b5 move so a6 is playable here but uh, bishop e7 is also good and bishop e7 is more preferred by engines because 
uh, that we pass the move castle for black so black king is still in some kind of danger and lot of tactics are involved so what computer tries to do is uh, to castle on the king side as soon as possible but i have seen human players playing this move a6 more than this bishop to e7 in my own play but uh, i cannot be very sure which one is better of them still this position is slightly better for white though black is materially ahead and rook f2 d1 this is the main move so now what is uh, immediate threat is this pawn can move to this e5 square and pawn here on this square d6 cannot capture it because there is an x-ray going on here rook on d1 is attacking queen on d8 so black has to do something about this pawn move and bishop d7 is still probably the best move in this position and here if i can be played and this is almost over for black now and what i said was bishop uh, e7 has a good move uh, but not in that position because this is uh, probably losing already for black so here in this position uh, b5 is uh, more aggressive and it is more preferred move this this is the probably the best move for black um, bishop b3 this is the main line still lying this uh, square h7 indirectly and still threatening this uh, pawn move here on e5 but uh, that is uh, that can be countered now with uh, different moves like c7 that is also possible that is not the best move i think knight to d7 or bishop to d1 uh, bishop uh, on sorry bishop on d1 moving so there are many other possibilities for black here and knight to d7 is also one of them but uh, this kind of move but this is really very passive looking move and still this is a better position for white so let's go back Let's check out some other possibilities instead of this a6 move because a6 is not that good uh, in this position for black. This bishop e7 I think is uh, the best possible continuation and then rook f to d1 and now e5 not d5 e5 so now again this uh, bishop is ready to go and access these squares here and for probably the best move for white here is bishop e3 preparing for this rook a to c1 a1 to c1 move so for best move is uh, to move your bishop to e3 square and now I have seen many players uh, playing this move bishop here and this is almost uh, equalizing for black and now white doesn't have much advantage here but uh, in material it is uh, slightly uh, weak as uh, a pawn down but still this position is uh, very comfortable for white to play so there is nothing bad in this position especially if you are playing against uh, slightly weaker players 
your another rook is also ready to move now and probably the best move in this position is knight to knight knight moving to another square just to but uh, it uh, sorry knight is pinned to queen so it cannot move to another square but uh, you can kick bishop first with h3 and then knight uh, moving to some more aggressive squares on g5 but uh, that is another theory for now we can move our rook to c1 so this is one possible move yeah, black is uh, slightly better as engine suggests but I know this position is really very very equal chess engines are going to suggest that black is slightly better but uh, that is not the case in reality if you are playing uh, a practical game and here tactical possibilities are so much and so immense that uh, it is e impossible even for a very strong chess engine to calculate everything once you input the move they realize suddenly that yes this possibility is uh, there and i have seen with this uh, thing with many chess engines sometimes they are very materialistic in nature they try to hold the pawn very strongly but uh, once you input a uh, tactical move and then they start calculating it and then they suddenly realize that yes this uh, tactical move is much better than the positional pawn saving move so it is like using their own strength against themselves <laughs> this computer chess engine so this this is the basic position we try to reach in mora gambit and though black can castle now but there are another sidelines also so we are going to have a look at the sidelines in another video uh, maybe after the Polgar game video so that's all today bye for now enjoy your chess bye bye